Have you ever seen Return yes, of the King? Yes, I have. I think it's a very good movie. I have what? A poop class. A poop The clock now reads exactly 13.60 Class begins now. <laughs> Today, we'll be discussing the Book of Nahum. <laughs> Um, do you have a question, uh, dear child? My name is Victor. What's the book of Nahum? Nahum is a short three-chapter book of the Bible. Maybe you haven't heard of it because it's so small. Let me assure you, though it is only three chapters long, it remains a significantly important and valuable book. Gather around, kids, and I shall tell you the tale found within the book of Nahum. <laughs> Nahum was a prophet of the Lord. One day, he was doing whatever. He, he, he was running around or sitting on the floor or something, I don't know. When the Lord decided to give him a vision. So Nahum got the vision, and he was probably like, all right then, or something. And then the rest of the book concerns that vision. <laughs> what was your vision about? Well, in chapter 1, we get a bit of a description of the majesty of God. He is just. He doesn't let the bad guys get away with anything. At the same time, though, he is patient. He only punishes when the time is right. He is so epic. <laughs> the rivers shrivel away when he wants them to. The whole world trembles of fear before him. Trust me, children, you do not want to get the Lord angry. He can just go, <laughs> and you're like, <laughs> yeah. He can whack you with his eyelash in your history. Anyone who opposes him is stupid. He can go just like, ugh, and then you're like, <laughs> But guess what? <laughs> he is on our side. When some bully is being mean to me, I can be like, Hey buddy, do I need to go get my daddy? He can throw you to another planet just by looking at you. You can't touch me. God protects those who trust in him. Uh-oh, but Nineveh crossed the line. God's angry at Nineveh, and so he's going to destroy it with a big flood and a big army. Uh, yes, dear child number two. I'm hungry. Oh, uh, um, yes, Humphrey? I forgot that Jonah is in to give the people their second chance. God did send Jonah, but then around 140 or 50 ish years later, the Ninevites turned away from God once again and discarded their second chance. Through Nahum, God tells the people of Judah that he will save them from the Assyrians. Nineveh is the capital of Assyria, by the way. Israel will receive his glory again. God tells Nineveh that they will be demolished. Yes, other dear child? What does demolished mean? It means... Bye-bye. Mm. <laughs> in Nahum chapter 2, the prophecy of Nineveh's destruction is discussed further. People with red shields and red shirts and red pants and flashing chariot metal come and attack Nineveh. The chariots swiftly fly down the streets. Mr. Commander summons his tripping and falling special troops because he so desires to. They break the dam and release the river. Then the pilots go. It is seriously epic. You do not want to mess with the mighty, awesome, totally flawless and powerful Lord. He has no weakness. Whoa! And surely settle the power of for the Lord has her under his glare. The people with all the red give the order that the residents of the city are to be prisoners. Female slaves cry. People run away. A person begs everyone to stop running, but no one listens. The red people steal Nineveh's treasures, and Nineveh is left naked and shuddering. And... DEMOLISHED! Dun dun dun. Now, everyone, turn in your Bibles to chapter 3, verses 1 through 3. I shall read to you. <laughs> 
What? Has no one brought their Bibles? Silly geese. And anyway, how terrible it will be for Nineveh. It is a city of murderers. It is full of liars. It is filled with stolen goods. The killing never stops. Whips crack, wheels clack, horses charge, chariots rumble, horsemen attack, swords flash, spears gleam. Manila was very evil. Because of that, our just lord punished her. In Nahum 3, God says that he will humiliate the people he is so against and that he will use them as an example. God then asks rhetorically if Nineveh is greater than Thebes. Am I pronouncing that right? Um, a strong city that could not stand, like no city can, against the Lord. Nineveh has weak troops and fire-touched gates that are wide open and vulnerable. Nineveh cannot escape the fire and the swords and the raging water no matter what they do, for no one can challenge the almighty and ultimate god of all. <laughs> when Nineveh falls, those who it had callously abused will cheer! <laughs> now then, Victor, Humphrey, and girl whose name I cannot recall, what have you learned? <laughs> What? Yes? God punishes the bad guys. Yes! You are such a good student! <laughs> but God is also a just God. He saves his beloved children, he protects them and watches over them. However, he also punishes the bad guys. Nahum proclaimed the Lord's prophecy that Nineveh will be attacked and destroyed. The prophecy later came true! This is why the book of Nahum is truly important. It is one of the many books of the Bible that display God's loving, loyal, but just and firm nature. Here is a message that you should all heed and remember. God is always with you. He is faithful to those who are faithful to him. <laughs> All you have to do is trust in him. Those who are evil will eventually be punished, and those who are good can always rely on the Lord. No one can face God in all his epicness. Ooh, ooh, it's a good thing that we have him on our side. <laughs> well, that's all. Thank you all for taking the time to listen to your weird substitute teacher this week. <laughs> I'm not quite used to teaching yet, but I hope you all learned something! <laughs> oh, mama.